everyone, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Today is the first day of our sew along for the Warmest Wishes quilt. It's actually a, a wall hanging and it is from Urban Elements. I've been talking about this for months. I can't believe it's finally here. I know a lot of you have purchased the pattern and some of you have even gone so far as to get a new scan and cut or maybe even get yourself a little Windows computer to be able to join in along with us. So the intent of the video series that I'm going to do with you this week is to take a paper pattern that is for applique and by using the scan and cut to scan it in and create an image file and an FCM file, then we are going to download that into Simply Applique software. And from there, we are going to stitch it out in the embroidery machine. It's a lot of fun and it's really easy. There is a little bit of prep work that goes into this ahead of time, but it's worth it in the end because as you get better and better at this, it's just gonna, it'll go quicker and quicker for you. It's kind of a strange thing at first, but in the end, it's all worth it. Simply Applique Software is available from all brands, and everything that I talk about in this video today, if you click in the description box below, there is links to everything that I've got, whether it's my thread stand or the software, or the pattern itself. So anything that you want to get, there will be a full list of links below each video that I make this week in order to uh, make this applique pattern. So today what I want to do is go over with you the pattern itself and what you need to do in order to get ready to be able to start scanning. You can get the pattern two separate ways. You can get pattern only, and it comes like this. It's a big full size, full sheet of paper pattern. And if you get the pattern only, then you source your own fabrics and you will put your own adhesive on the back. I'll be using heat and bond with mine. Or you can also buy the pattern with pre-cut pieces fabric pieces already and they come with adhesive on the back. I saw that, I'll pick it up. For those of you that already have your fabric pieces, I recommend that you begin laying them out on the paper pattern, first of all to make sure that you have them all, and second of all to kind of get an idea of how things are going to be layered in the applique design. If you don't have fabric pieces, we're going to scan in the paper pattern if you do have fabric pieces, you're going to scan in your fabric pieces. Everything's a lot easier if you already have the fabric, of course. If you do not have the fabric and you only have the paper pattern, on those pieces that intersect where you have an overlap, like the body goes over the legs, you're going to need to trace those pieces onto a piece of paper in order to be able to scan them in. I do not recommend making a copy of the piece but when you make a copy of it, the scan and cut picks up multiple layers of the image and it may even pick up, if you cut it, it may even pick up the outside line edge of the paper and assume that that is part of the drawing and it, it really doesn't work that well. So if you take a magic marker and you just trace the pattern pieces, comes out, the scan and cut thinks that it's a single image and it works great. Also, notice on here, I made a little boo-boo when I was doing my tracing. I got messed up. That was a dotted line that I shouldn't have done. When we choose the type of outline in the scan and cut, we're going to choose outline only so it will not recognize this. We're only going to choose the outside of the line and by the outside of the line I also mean not just the line itself but also the outside of the line so here where I made a little boo-boo right there it's it's not even going to see that it, it's just going to recognize the outside edge of the line if you have any jagged edges it like it here it's kind of jagged it's going to see them I don't know if you can tell, it's a little bit jagged right there. So in that case, I used, I would use my 
curved ruler. I'm using a micron pen to do my tracing. I would use the curve ruler and just clean that up just a little bit so now it's a nice round smooth line. It's important that you do that because this is the baseline for what your cut pieces are going to be cut like and it's also going to be the baseline for how your embroidery pieces are going to be stitched down. Because we're doing this in the scan and cut, when you have multiples, you only need to trace one. So for instance, this piece right here is the leg. I only traced it once and I will copy and paste and make two of them. And here's the leaf. I need three of those. So I will copy and paste several of them for the eyeball and the pom-pom on the hat. So I outlined, I traced outlined a dime right here and I will make that smaller in the scan and cut or in the brother canvas. And here is the hat and I trace outlined a quarter. I think if you had a 50 cent piece it would probably work pretty good. It will need to be larger. This particular circle is one and three eighths inch across and this particular circle right here is just shy of five eighths of an inch. So we'll just have to remember to go ahead and resize those either in the canvas or in the uh, in the scan and cut. I'm going to do all of my editing and and whatnot in the the canvas that is free to use that's where I'm gonna save all of my things you don't have to you can certainly do your editing in the machine it's just a little more tedious because the screen is small and uh, you you know and then you would save them to the a USB stick to take to your computer for the letters those for those pattern pieces that do not have intersecting lines you can go ahead and make a copy of those and then cut them out. They will transition just fine into the into the brother canvas. The problem with the brother canvas is it doesn't have an eraser. So if you have a line that is sticking out or it's not supposed to be there or something, there's nowhere for you to grab an eraser and kind of make that go away, like in um, Photoshop. If you do not have a brother scan and cut, let's say you have the Cricut or the Silhouette, you need to figure out some sort of way to create an SVG file and then upload that SVG file into the Brother Canvas. That There is a way for you to be able to do that. Probably you would need to print a calibration sheet for either the Silhouette or the Cricut and then lay the pattern piece on the calibration sheet and then take a picture of it with your phone and then that way you'll have the SVG and you can import that SVG file into the um, the brother canvas. You might have to do an extra step and import that particular picture into your your cloud for the silhouette or the Cricut to create the SVG, save it to your computer, and then import that into brother canvas. Not real sure how all that works, but it's not like super easy. So that's why I have the brother Scanica. So. Simply Applique only works on a Windows machine. It will not work on a Mac. We are not sure if it works with Mac Parallels. So if you have a Mac and you do not have a Windows machine, then uh, you will not be able to use Simply Applique. Let's talk about hoop size. The smallest hoop you can get away with to fully stitch this out without having to do a whole bunch of multiple hoopings is the 9 by 14. Uh, the longest piece is the, the one of the socks that goes on the flamingo's leg and that will fit. It's 12 inches long. It will fit in the 9 by 14. And then the largest piece width wise is the body and it will also fit in the 9 by 14 hoop. If you have a smaller hoop than a 9 by 14, then you can still do this, but you will need to sew on those pieces that do not fit in the hoop the old fashioned way using your sewing machine. Regardless of the hoop size, I do not recommend using a satin stitch to stitch this down. I recommend that you use the blanket stitch. You can use the run or the bean stitch that's available in Simply Applique, but in that case, I think that you would just want to stitch the 
the placement stitch and the, and the tack down and leave it at that. If you try to stitch the bean stitch or the run stitch, it will stitch right on the edge of the fabric and you probably will miss it. Whereas the blanket stitch will stretch in and catch it each time. But because we're not doing single piece applique, we're doing multiple layers of applique, I really recommend that you use the blanket stitch. I think you'll be happiest with that. Okay, so today I'm gonna go ahead and scan everything into the Scan and Cut and get everything uploaded into the cloud and that will be your homework for today. You need to go through and make sure that you have all your pieces. You need to lay them out on, if you have the fabric pieces, you need to lay them out and make sure you have them all and then you will need to scan in all of the fabric pieces or all of your paper tracings into the, the Brother Canvas. I have a scanning mat and that is just a plain mat without any kind of sticky on it. It has a flap and it allows everything to stay in there nice and smooth and clean. It just keeps all the dust and the grime out that we do not need. On the Scan and Cut DX, it does matter which way your mat goes in. On the CM350 or 650, it does not. So I'm going to load the mat. We have Home and a Load and Unload button and a Pause. And I'm going to load... Okay, I've loaded my mat. I'm going to tell it scan. And you can do a direct cut, scan to cut data, or scan to USB. I'm going to do scan to cut data, and I'm going to tell it start. Okay, that's a real good scan. Now, when you get to this screen right here, you have these three options. You have outside lines only, inside and outside, and then regions. Regions is used usually for color. So, if I only chose the outside lines on these, I would miss the inside of the A and the inside of the E. So, I'm going to choose inside, outside. And it looks like it found it all pretty good. I'm going to tell it OK. And I'm going to save it into the machine. It tells me it's number 25. OK. And I'm going to tell it OK again, just so I don't have to go back and go find it. And this time I'm going to save it in the cloud. There is a video linked below showing you how to set up the Brother Canvas and be able to save wirelessly to the cloud. I'm going to tell it OK. So I'm going to continue on with this process for the rest of the entire pattern. I'm going to go to Home. OK to delete all patterns, I'm going to tell it OK because I'm finished with scanning that one.
today's video, we talked about the pattern and decided what needed to be done with the pattern. Hopefully you were able to place your pieces on and figure out where everything goes if you already have the fabric pieces. And if you don't, you did all your tracings and were able to scan everything into the scan and cut. In the next video, we will go ahead, for those who do not have the fabric pieces already, we'll go ahead and cut out all of the fabric pieces and begin to get them imported into Simply Applique. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.